Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and I would like to welcome you back to our continuing coverage of the IGF On Live Indie Showcase 2012. This time around, we are taking a look at the traditional puzzle game, English Country Tune. English Country Tune comes to us from Stephen Lavelle, based out of England, uh, Cambridge, I believe, to be precise, and it is nominated as a finalist in the Excellence in Design category. It's got some stiff competition in this category, with games like Frozen Synapse, Spelunky, and my personal favorite, Adam Zombie Smasher, so there's no doubt that this would be considered an underdog, especially given its traditional nature. But this game was a damn good time, and I'm going to tell you about it and give you my first impressions, my thoughts and feelings, after having played the game for the 30 minute trial. So let me start you off with a brief description of what the game is as I experienced it and as I understand it after having experienced it. You play as a 2D square in a world which is otherwise 3D. So what this means for gameplay is that most of the time, because you are a 2D entity in a 3D world, you are actually moving in two dimensions, up, down, left, right. Occasionally, however, you are given the opportunity to move within the Z-axis, and this plane of movement becomes very important for solving many of the game's puzzles. So, you have to think in three dimensions. Does that sound familiar? Well, if you watch my videos, you know that the same thing was true of Critical Mass. However, this game does a much better job, in my opinion, of keeping you in that particular frame of mind, because it only allows you to move in that third dimension when it wants you to, whereas Critical Mass demanded that you constantly think in those three dimensions, thus confusing my feeble human brain. So in the end, this limited use of the third dimension ends up actually helping the game quite a bit. It's a very good design decision made by Steven, and I really think that it ended up making this a much better game overall. Now don't get me wrong, you have to think in three dimensions very, very often, especially when encountering some of the obstacles that you have to use in order to finish the, the levels. But ultimately, 3D is there as a icing on the cake. It's not a gimmick that's used to make the game seem more original. It is a mechanic that is utilized in the best of times to make the puzzles more challenging and more interesting. Now, I'll tell you honestly, after spending 30 minutes with this game, I have no doubt that it deserves its place as a finalist in the Excellence in Design category. However, I don't really believe it'll win because it has a sort of a vanilla feel to it overall, especially when compared to games like Adam Zombie Smasher and especially Frozen Synapse. I think Frozen Synapse was clearly the darling indie game of 2011 as far as strategy and puzzle games go, and I think it's pretty much got all of the categories that it's nominated in, in the bag, except for maybe the grand prize. So, I don't think that this game is going to win any major awards from the IGF, but just the fact that it was nominated goes to show that they've done something special, because they've taken what could otherwise be a pop cap game, and they've done enough with it to get it noticed that it is unique, it is original, and it is fun. This game is also quirky. For instance, in the first world, Larva, when you're introduced to the spheres, which I assume are supposed to represent the titular larva, a tooltip tells you these spheres are not affected by gravity, but they pretend to be. What? That's an odd way to say that, don't you think? I mean, if they want to get across the point that it will react to gravity, why not just say it will react to gravity? Unless they're saying that for a reason. And that's sort of the journey that your mind goes on, and you start to think, maybe there's something more to this game. Maybe there's something beneath the surface that will be revealed later. You know, maybe there's a whole world here that I'm not seeing. Now, nothing in my 30-minute trial would have actually reinforced that. I, I saw no evidence that that was in fact true, but it definitely got in my head, and it made me think twice, and that's a pretty big accomplishment for a fairly simple 2D puzzle game. I think the last thing I want to hit on here is the music. The music is wonderful. It's just the right sort of tunes for this game. It really fits well with the style of the game and with the generally laid-back nature of the game. Everything that I played was fairly laid-back. No uh, timers creating artificial deadlines. It was just like, hey, here's this bunch of stuff and you need to do something with it. 
And I really liked that. And the music fit right in with that. And that's always a very, very important aspect of playing any game, especially one that's going to ask you to think and to spend time engaging it on an intellectual level. So bravo on the music and bravo to Stephen Lavelle on a well-made and wonderfully designed game. All right, guys, that's going to do it for English Country Tune. I hope you are enjoying this IGF on Live Indie Showcase. And in the future, I might try to do further things like this, where I keep two smaller videos that are sort of synopsises of my feel synopsises synopsi of my feelings on the game, as opposed to an actual playthrough with live commentary. All right, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.